What's going on everybody, Josh here with Scrapyard Film. Today I got another tutorial for you, and this time I'm gonna be showing you about Vegas Pro 17's built-in, brand new, rebuilt video stabilization. Stabilization allows you to smooth out footage. It's as simple as that, but there's a lot of variables that go into it to make that stabilization look good. Video stabilization isn't just a miracle plugin that'll make your footage perfectly awesome like you just shot it on a gimbal. The truth is, there's just some footage that cannot be stabilized and look good no matter how hard you try and what software you use. But under the right conditions, video stabilization can provide some really awesome results, like you shot it on a gimbal, it's perfect. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So when it comes to stabilizing footage, there are a few key factors that you should really know about before you jump into it. First thing is CMOS sensors or CMOS sensors. They're the main sensor used in a ton of DSLR cameras and what they do when there's high amounts of movement back and forth, they provide warping and wobbling. And that can also be known as rolling shutter. The next thing you wanna know about is shutter speed and again, rolling shutter. The lower your shutter speed is, the more motion blur you get. And the more motion blur you have inside your video that you're trying to stabilize, the harder it's gonna to be to do so and the worse it's gonna look. If you make sudden, quick, sharp movements with a low shutter speed, you're gonna see warps, wobbles, and it's gonna be terrible. Next is frame rate. This kind of goes hand in hand with shutter speed because if you follow the 180 degree rule, that means that your shutter speed is double what your frame rate is. For me personally, when I'm doing any kind of stabilization shots, I like to break that rule and put my shutter speed quadruple whatever my frame rate is. I also like to shoot in 60 frames per second because I can slow that down and make that look really nice. So if I shoot in 60 frames per second, I want my shutter speed to be 240. If you're trying to stabilize footage that's in 24 frames per second with 50 shutter speed, you know the cinematic rule right there, you'll most likely have a bad time and you'll see blurs and wobbles and it'll look just really odd. So what does all this mean to you? Well, it means that you need to prepare your shots that you know you wanna stabilize. You need to do your best while recording to make sure your footage is as smooth as possible so you can do the least amount of correction in post. So here are some things that'll make stabilizing a lot better. Use a camera with in-body image stabilization. A lot of cameras have this, like the GH5, and what it does is it provides an extra layer of stabilization built into the camera itself. Next, you wanna use a lens with optical image stabilization. Basically, it's a lens that has its own form of stabilization inside there. Now, when you pair that with a camera with in-body image stabilization, that creates a double stabilization, and that really helps make your video look really smooth before you even start editing. Another thing to use is electronic stabilization built into your camera, if it has it. What this is gonna do is provide a third layer of stabilization in your camera. It's probably gonna crop in your video just a little bit, and it may act a little different depending on what's going on in the screen, but providing that extra layer of stabilization in your camera makes it even better. Next thing you wanna do is make your movements as smooth as humanly possible. And again, when shooting, I recommend shooting at at least 60 frames per second. And I always set my shutter speed to quadruple whatever my frame rate is. So I like to put it at 240, 250-ish. That is gonna reduce motion blur, but it's pretty easy to add motion blur back into your footage in post. Some things you wanna avoid is freehanding your camera. If you just have your hand on either side of your camera and you're trying to do you know, stabilization stuff like that, you may not notice it, but you're shaking more than you think you are. The best thing you can do is use a three-point mounting system, which is two handles on either side of your camera and something on your shoulder or touching your body, and that's providing you three points of stabilization. They make them on Amazon, and they're pretty cheap nowadays. I bought one, and I'll link in the description below, but I used it for packs, and it was awesome. Next thing you want to do is avoid dramatic direction changes. So if you're looking directly at something and then you shift over to the side and you start recording that, that's going to really throw off the stabilization algorithm, and it could look really, really bad. If you have to do a shot like that, I recommend you split the clip and then do the stabilization on one part and then do another stabilization on another if you need to when it's already at its different angle. This also goes hand in hand with avoiding sharp movements. So if you're looking at something and you kind of like jitter real quick, making a little sharp movement, that's gonna look terrible when it tries to stabilize it. So again, avoid sharp movements and try to be as smooth as possible when you're recording. Okay, so we're in Vegas 17 now. I already dragged and dropped a clip of the example I'm gonna be showing you right here. And I'm gonna play it for you. This is the original footage. This is me trying to do a kind of a cinematic swoop in, but you can see it's pretty shaky. Now, if we want to fix that up a little bit, let's go ahead and drag and drop video stabilization. So at the top left, we can search for video stabilization by typing in video stabilization, but I just type in VID and I see it down here. I'm gonna click it and then drag the default onto the original clip. This will load up the stabilization window. I'm gonna drag and expand this a little bit because we're gonna see some more options. 
Right off the bat, you see your user view, basic. If you drop that down, you'll see professional and expert. The only one we're gonna want to do is expert because in expert, we can customize a lot of these options to provide better results. So you see, once we choose expert down here, you'll see parameters and under there, we'll see method and motion compensation. Method, if we drop that down, we see fast and accurate. You'll always wanna be using accurate 99% of the time. Motion compensation, if we drag that down, you're gonna see some options. Translation, translation plus rotation, and translation plus rotation plus scale. And then finally, warp. Warp is probably the most common one you've heard of because Premiere and After Effects have warp stabilizers. Warp works pretty well. And for the most part, for any kind of shaky footage or free handing footage like this, you'll probably be using translation plus rotation plus scale. So they do provide slightly different results, these two, and those are the two we're gonna be going over. So to start things off, we're gonna choose this one, which is the default. So over here under expert mode, we have a few other options as well. We have a width and height region of interest. This is the probably the most important thing you want to do. So you can shrink and grow this rectangle or square to fit whatever object you want to stabilize. So I wanna stabilize this Goku doing a spirit bomb right here. So I'm gonna drop the width inward to where it's surrounding him. Keep the height the same, it looks pretty good to me. Now, number of grids in X. These two are exactly what they say they are. You are setting the number to how many grids you want on that axis. And so the higher this number is, the more grids are in here. You won't be able to see them, unfortunately, but they are gonna virtually be inside of here. So the higher this is, the more grids there are, which technically should mean it's more accurate. But it will also mean that it'll take your computer a little bit longer to analyze it because it has to analyze that many more grids inside that specific region you set. Now under here, we have number of points per cell. This is how many tracking points it's gonna look for inside that region based upon how many grids you told it to have. So again, the higher number this is, the more accurate it should be technically, and it would take a little bit longer to analyze this. Now over here under tracker type, here is the interesting part. We have three options. Lucas Canade, this is an optical flow algorithm. Sum of absolute differences is another algorithm. It's different than the Lucas Canade one. And this third option down here, although I can't find any kind of documentation on it, I believe it's a hybrid of both of these algorithms together. But to me, in my mind, that seems like it would be a nightmare to code. So it could be its own third individual algorithm as well. All I know is that there's three different options. And for the most part, you really can't tell the difference between any of these. The only thing I could tell the difference of is if I use Lucas Canade, then the stabilization went pretty quickly. If I use some of absolute differences, the stabilization took a little bit longer. And if I use hybrid, it did take the longest to finish the stabilization. That is the only clear differences I know about these three tracker types. So let's go ahead and analyze this bad boy. I got my region of interest and number of grids. Typically, I like to look at the number of grids also as a scale. So it looks like the X axis is much shorter than the Y axis by maybe twice the amount. So I'm gonna put maybe 10 trackers in the number of grids for X and 20 for number of grids in Y. So in my mind, the grids now will be almost perfect little squares all across this. Number of points per cell, I'm gonna go ahead and max this bad boy out. So we have 20 points per cell. So it should provide the most accurate result. And as for this, I'm gonna choose Lucas Canade. Now let's click Analyze Motion, see how it does. During the stabilization phase, you won't see anything happen on your preview at all. So you just have to wait till it's done. Okay, so now that it finished, we now see a new button that says Clear Motion Data, and this erases everything we just did. But if we scroll down more, we have a ton more trees that appeared. Stabilization options, borders, motion blur, and visualization. For the most part, you really won't actually be moving and messing with any of these parameters down here, aside from the mode, the stabilization options mode. You could possibly also use the motion blur option because remember when I was saying, if you wanted to record and get the best stabilized shot, you wanna record it at high frame rate and a high shutter speed, which reduces motion blur. So if you go to add motion blur, you can reintroduce motion blur to your footage to make it look a little more cinematic and natural. So up here, the mode, there's two options when you drop this down, smooth motion and freeze motion. There are two big differences in these two. Smooth motion is for this type of shot I'm doing now. I'm moving it and panning it towards an object and I wanna stabilize that one object in the center. Freeze motion is usually for when you're actually just aiming your camera at one single point and it's not moving at all. You're just holding your camera and you just wanna make that camera seem like it's on a tripod pointing at one thing. So smooth motion is the option that's changed. Now what happens is if you increase this number, it's gonna crop in your video. We'll see that right here. If we move it up, you're gonna see it zoom in, but the more it zooms in, the smoother your stabilization should be. Now this doesn't always work out as planned and I'm gonna show you, we play it back. Sometimes it looks all weird and jittery. So right here, you see it's actually like very, very weird and jittery. 
you saw it was pretty smooth but it's just bouncing back and forth like rubber banding that is something that happens in vegas and i don't know exactly why but it's not too big of a deal because we can adjust this smoothing number and we can increase it right here maybe and then keep playing it back and eventually that rubber banding will go away i'm gonna drop my quality down so we can see this better let's do good quarter or something like that so there we go so that really did smooth out the shot really nicely and that is the stabilization at work looking really really nice and so we'll go back down to these options and we can go over them a little bit so the smoothing parameters this is basically up here where we had our option check translation rotation and scale so we go down here, we see our translation, rotation, and scale. So you can real-time check and uncheck these and see which works better for you. If you wanted, you can additionally zoom in. Right now it's zoomed in 5%, but this additional zoom number is automatically set based upon how much Vegas corrected your footage by doing the twisting, rotation, and scaling. And so if we play it back, we won't see any kind of weird borders. But if we drop this back down to zero additional zoom and we play it back, we're gonna see weird borders and crops from the shaking and correcting it did. So we bring that zoom back down to 5%, which is not bad at all for the correction. And then we won't see any borders. You can also mess with additional translations and all sorts of edge fillings, but for the most part, all these things are always set to be where they need to be. Sometimes the additional zoom isn't set correctly or you'll see some weird borders and you can click auto zoom and that will ensure that you don't see any kind of borders while you're playing your video. And then down finally down to add motion blur we can check this and add the threshold from 0 to 100% motion blur. And I don't think I need it so I'm going to uncheck it because when you add motion blur that does add to the performance and taxing on your computer. And so there we go. We have successfully stabilized this footage and it looks awesome. So let's go ahead and repeat this process one more time, but instead of translation, rotation, and scale, we're going to use warp. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the plugin, redrop video stabilization on here, go to expert, keep the method on accurate, motion compensation, we're going to go with warp. Everything else is going to be the exact same. Um, and this time, let's just choose sum of absolute difference. This is a different one. Analyze motion. Okay, now that it's done, let's go ahead and see what it looks like. And right off the bat, I see a little bit of differences with warp. So let's look at that again in slow motion. So it kind of like starts off going in and then breaks the angle real quick and then smoothly goes in, then breaks the angle, then smoothly goes in. So it's kind of, that's what it looks like to me. So we're going and then new angle, new angle, you know, kind of like that. You can see when it did that instead of one smooth curve we have more of an angular thing but it's still smooth compared to what it was so there we go so next thing i want to try out is this one more time but with the hybrid and see if i get any differences but i'll also use warp because that did provide a different thing so i'm going to clear this motion data do do warp but i'm going to do hybrid right here select it analyze so let's see what warp hybrid looks like and as you can see, it's very, very jittery and shaky right there. So I'm going to change my smooth motion option. Bring it back out, maybe. There we go. That looks really good. That one looked a lot more smooth than the warp with the sum of absolute. So to wrap this video up, I'm going to go ahead and show you the issues I've had and the best things I've done to correct those issues. So to start this off, you did see all that jitteriness and shakiness. Again, I don't know what causes that, but the footage I have tested on has been 8-bit and 10-bit footage, and it's happened for both. So my only option to resolve that was mess with the smoothing option right here, until you land on one where it's completely smooth. I did notice that if you stabilize multiple things, let's say I have like five clips on here and I have stabilization done on every single one of them, the more you stabilize on a timeline, it seems that the worse results you get. So I really recommend having your own dedicated project for the specific clip you want to stabilize and leave that entirely out of your original project. And so when you get the video stabilized and rendered, then put the rendered video into your original project that's already stabilized and good to go. That will definitely provide you the best results. Another thing I did, which I noticed great improvement on is if I go to options and then hold shift and press preferences, that'll bring up the internal tab. And from here, we type S04, we're gonna see four options right here. I turned these two options to false and I did notice an improvement on that jittery and shakiness. The only downside of changing these two options to false is that Vegas won't recognize 10-bit footage. 
and I love shooting my stuff in 10-bit, which is higher quality, sharper colors, sharper image. It's just all around a better image. So an alternative again is when you're prepping your footage, go ahead and shoot an 8-bit, then you don't have to worry about this, stabilize it, switch this back to true, then you can put everything else in 10-bit. Another thing I noticed that really helps is if we go to file and go down to properties, if you go to resample mode, if you change this to disable resample, I've noticed that to really help out a lot as well. But that's all the tips I have for this. And there you have it. You now know all about Vega 17's brand newly built stabilizer. You saw the good of it, the bad of it, and know kind of what to do. And it's all situational. There are other third party plugins out there that do stabilization. Some do them totally different than the way Vegas does it. And you get a bunch of different results with a bunch of different software. So stay tuned in the future. I'm gonna do some comparisons of these stabilization features in different programs so you can see which one looks better to you. So thanks again for watching everybody, and if you want, maybe shoot a like and subscribe down there if this video helped you out, because if you subscribe, that'll really help me out. I'm trying to reach my goal of 20,000, and if you want to support the channel, the links are in the description below. You become a patron, you can become a YouTube member, you can become a Twitch subscriber, you can do a lot of things to support the channel. And if you do choose to support the channel, you get a bunch of perks and benefits with it. So thanks again for watching everybody, and I'll see you all in the next video. And I want to give a shout out to all my supporters, especially my super scrappers, LMC, HPL Gamers, and Old Man Beta.